Right, guys, uh, just continuing on from the video I put before, I think it was number 11 or 12. Obviously, making the uh, wheels for the front of the traction engine. I've decided I'm going for six spokes. Uh, so, I've just been working out, obviously, uh, the divisions for where the spokes need to go. Um, so, yeah, just been on YouTube and looked into it, and some really good videos like breakdowns and obviously how to do this kind of stuff i mean this might be common sense to a lot of people but like to me it's a complete dunce in school um <laughs> i don't even think well i know for a fact i didn't get my maths gcse um never really paid attention in class and it was just all way over my head um, but obviously since leaving school doing apprenticeships and that obviously work now as a full-time engineer um, and I don't even relate half of this stuff to maths, obviously, which sounds silly, but it's just, I suppose, the way you approach things. Um, so, yeah, done my divisions here, using my little uh, antique compass I picked up somewhere, like an old uh, steam rally or something, I don't know. So, yeah, these are all marked out now. I'm going to transfer them onto my wheels, onto the rims. I'll subscribe these um, to line up my spokes and drill them for the rivets and yeah i'll probably move on then to the middle part of the hub and try and record that as well okay i'll see you in a bit okay so we've worked out the uh the six points here obviously um one two three you know you can well you can see the spokes and I've uh, worked out the size of the hub, just marked that out. And that kind of gives me an idea of the length of the spoke before it obviously comes into contact with the, uh, the well, we'll call it the hub. Uh, my idea was maybe cut all the um, spokes just, you know, a little bit longer than the length of this. So they're on contact, weld them, and then put a cap either end, obviously turn these hubs on the lathe. And then um, stick the wheel in, in, in the lathe, drill it, um, and press the hubs either side. But I've also decided, I've also decided um, that I'd like to maybe put a bit of a kink in the spokes. These things here that I showed in the last video. So what I'm doing now is, this is obviously a, uh, so you can see, it's just a simple bending jig that I've made. I've seen Colin Furs using one something similar that he shared in one of his videos. Um, so yeah, I decided just to obviously make my own from bits of random off cuts and that. Just a bit of angle and a flat plate. And I'm not going to do to an exact angle, you know, work out the angle finder and that. I think I'll put, you know, maybe check them, just put like a 10 degree bend on them. Um, just mark out now where these are going to be bent. So bend one there. Let's see how this goes. Line that up with the... Uh... Let's see, might not even work. Okay, we're square there. Right, I'll have to put that, ah, well, just have to have them just on the cusp of that. I'll do something like that. Right, I'll just get these first initial ones. Get the angle finder on. I mean, these are a handy tool if any of you have never used one before. Just a digital angle finder. Obviously, you can get the, the manual ones. But to be honest, We use this a lot in work, using the press brake. It's like a big panel folder machine for steel. So obviously you can uh, zero them off at 90 or whatever angle you want to and then work the difference you need to come back. If you're using like a bending machine or something, they're really handy. We use them a lot though. If we need to replicate something or fix, you know, say if we're, a machine's coming, we need to swap the panel, remake it, it's rushed it away. Um, you can obviously get all that. 
information we need off measuring the original and then just obviously copy it over so that is currently so I'll zero this off it zero at 180 gives us obviously a flat and then we can work out okay so that's 21 degrees roughly so I think we'll just Take a bit of that out. So we're at 18.5. Touch more. We'll aim for 20 and then we'll take it back to 20 the other side. Here we go. Okay, so. You can see that upside down. Nope. Twenty degrees. Cool. So that's what we look like. So I'll use this as obviously my. Uh, what you call it your. Uh, everything's going to be copied from that. Now, not exactly what you call it, but you know. The, uh, the master key, whatever you call it, I don't know. So I'll dig the rest of these out and we'll get them all the same and then we'll do vice versa, you know, bend it, kick it the other way. Just give us a nice kind of a, a bit more detail. So, yeah, these are relatively simple to make, providing you've got the equipment. I mean, you need a welder, obviously, and a grinder. Handy tool to have. That's about there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, really looking forward to getting started on the uh, the boiler. Currently my TIG weld is with my brother, so once I get it back from him, which hopefully will be either this week or next. And uh, I've been talking to a friend about putting tubes in the boiler. Because the original plan that I got off George didn't state that you, you, you needed to, but I figured, you know, you get better steaming properties, I'd imagine. Because it's obviously how the old fashioned ones are done. George had done a thing, where apparently it's called hedgehogging. Um, where you just cover the boiler in little copper spikes. It's silver soldered them on all over the bottom. Uh, I think it acts like um, it just helps with the heat for whatever reason. So I might give that a go as well, you know. But I'm going to make a test piece first. I've got some copper pipe, I'll check the thicknesses and everything of it. To the uh, a little bit more to what I have, what George recommended for the boil. I mean, he's made his and he's ran it up, and it's you now it's all good. Um, I'd seen somewhere someone had done a similar post, could have been George to be fair, on one of the uh, the Percy gas ones, and they said they run quite nice at 30 psi. So that's uh, all good fun, isn't it? Right, dig out the rest of them. Mm -hmm. so there's lots of videos with these, so if any of you are curious, I'm sure you know you can look into them. Just like a vice fresh break, I guess you call it. Nice. 
So I'll play around with all these as well to make sure we're all the same. It's kind of hard to film with this kind of stuff because obviously it takes such a long time to do anything. But at the same time, I mean, if you're anything like me, it's always interesting to watch stuff. I couldn't find an awful lot of videos. I mean, I guess it's not really a hobby you associate with younger people. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's obviously plenty of people that do it. But, um, like all the clubs that have contacted about stuff like this, they were, uh, they were only familiarised with um, you know, actual scaled down traction engines. Found a few videos of people that have made their own. There's one fellow that's made like a full size, I don't know, four or six inch scale I guess uh, steel and plumbing parts and that you know and he's obviously been running it for a good while and it's well I'd imagine it's been tested using outdoors but, uh, yeah really looking forward to getting started on the boiler that'd be good fun used to break out the TIG welder. Okay, so there we are. You see now they've got a slight kink on them. So I'll repeat the process again on the other side and uh, take us to where we are. Okay, so there we have But it's hard to kind of kick. Kind of see the shape of it. I'm just going to replicate that with the rest of these, and then I can start working. I might cut these down, rivet them to the rims. Saying that, it probably would be better to weld these rims in. It would also be easier to rivet these while they're at this. So yeah, we'll work that out as we go along. Just press the rest of these. Okay guys, I've just uh, obviously bent all these now, all 12 of them. Um, and I've just marked in where I'm going to cut them, the grinder. And I'll just say now, <coughs> always make sure, you know, you know, using anything like a grinder, wear eye protection. I never used to be so keen on it. I mean, I did wear them, but I was a bit laxed. And uh, anyway, I was just see, was in work. I've had metal in my eye a few times, but the last time it happened, I had welding mask on, welding goggles. I had a piece go in my eye, in my right eye. Um, well, quite a few pieces, to be fair, about three or four, I think it was. Anyway, they struggled to get them out, and I've lost. Uh, I've got partial sight in my right eye. Um, nothing, it's not serious, I mean I just can't focus with my right eye anymore, anything small, like fine print, I can't read. Obviously when both their eyes are open it's not a problem, but I'm right eye dominant, so if I ever go to squint to focus on something I can't really see. But other than that, you know, it's perfectly fine. So 100% make sure you wear, you know, eye protection. I mean these, these aren't the best. Um, I do have some that wrap around, obviously in work, wrap around and grip to your head, with like kind of a foam. Uh, ring around them just to make sure nothing can get in. I wear them all the time, even when I'm welding, grinding, whatever, just all throughout the day. So, yeah, you know, big, big no no, not grinding without any goals. Uh, you see lots, of, you know, it's, yeah, whatever. If you don't want money, then fine, don't bother. But for me, you know, lesson learned. So, yeah, now that's dealt with, I'm going to crack on, start putting these. using the uh, grip in each one. Okay, so it's loosely mocked together. It's literally just pushed into the tube, the rim. Can I see it there? That's kind of neat. So I'll be doing that. And these, I'll clean them up so obviously where they join, like there, they all interlink. And um, tack them all together, front and back. 
and then I'll get on the lathe and drill a hole through the center. And then, like I said, make cut this like 10 mil, we'll say. Face it off both sides, make two of them for each wheel, and then sandwich it like that, you know, in between. And um, maybe even make it a press fitting. So it's a nice tight press fit. And then I'll probably insert a oil like bush, like a brass bush, just for a bit, you know, lubrication. And that'll be the front wheels that made. So yeah, it's looking pretty cool. All right, so I'll carry on with these. I'll do the other one and then clean them up and maybe rivet them. I'm just going to weld this, obviously, to the inside. I'm going to have a quick think before I do that whether I'm going to add some sort of strips on the outside. I've got a ruck, ruck of them, maybe. And rivet them on or something. It might be pretty cool. Right, I'll see you in a bit, guys. Okay, you can see here, obviously, I've pre drilled the first one. And I've just rigged it up now so they're pinned together. Just so I can transfer that pattern then onto the second one. Um, so yeah, I'm just drilling these out now. And then I'll clean them up. Right, so this is where I'm up to now with the uh, the front wheels. So this one's riveted together. Kind of give you a rough idea. Obviously they're not. It's hard to do one hand. There we are. So I have to imagine that now. Remember a piece of this either side, probably about 10 mil faced off, stuck on either side, and then drilled through, centre drilled through, and I'll probably put a brass bush in there, just to allow it to be a bit easier on the axle, a bit easier to turn. That's some pretty chuffy then, for you know how long they've taken. Um, so we've got the other side to do. And then, like I said, I can't decide what to do with the outside of the wheels, whether to just stick a piece of rubber on, um, make sure the road locomotive ones, or to go around with strips and rivets, which, you know, will look pretty cool, but obviously it's very time consuming as well. And this kind of being just a, uh, a simplified traction engine. Um, like, I'm not even sure how well it's going to run. You know, I'm going to try my best to get it running as best as I can but you know it's the first one obviously by the time you come to your second one you've learned a lot and you can improve on a lot of things so but yeah it's looking pretty cool I think by the time I make the back ones as well it's really going to come together so I'm quite chuffed with that <laughs> 